Welcome to Boards and Gear, Composition and Development. In this segment, we are going to talk about how to bring together a good board. Nancy, why is this important? Well, a board that has the right people with the right tools is better able to respond to the opportunities and challenges that come before it. They're able to bring the community into their work to better achieve their mission. Okay, well, so we have a couple experts here again to talk to you about composition and development and why having a good board is important. My name is Rebecca Zanata. I'm president of RJZ Connections as well as a senior consultant with the Ostara Group and this is Amara. My name is Amara Odin and I run Amara Odin Consulting after 20 years in the nonprofit world. And today we're going to be talking about boards, specifically their development and composition. And this matters because having the right people in the room and giving them the right tools they need and helping form their cohesiveness makes a huge impact on a nonprofit. Yeah, and I think we start with the people, right? Mm -hmm. The idea that the people that are sitting on the board are really important. They are. And so if you think about it from an inquiry and then some sort of an application where they have some skin in the game mm -hmm. and then an orientation so they know what our organizations are about. And I think having a very clear process in terms of how are you recruiting your board, how are you training your board, and then I know we've talked about evaluation. Yeah, yeah, and um, I think so often we, after we get people on the board, we just ask them to serve. Yeah. And you can waste up to a year of a board member's time by not giving them the tools they need ahead of time so they know what to expect, right. uh, what's expected of them. Right. And so if you want to really increase your board's effectiveness, then getting that orientation at the beginning of a board member's service helps plug them in right away, helps them see right. how they can be of service to the organization and also how to fit into the group. Right. And you know, in terms of like a key document is the job description, right? Yeah. The idea that giving a job description to a potential board member before they join the board, right, right away, yeah. and that clarifies what their time commitment's going to be, what their financial commitment's going to be, mm -hmm. and the idea that they shouldn't just show up at the first board meeting and be, here okay, you go. Here you go. Right. right. Exactly. So yeah. the idea of having a very clear job description that talks about what their time, their talent, and their treasure investment in the mm -hmm. organization is going to be is key. Yeah, and I think the other thing that's important about the job description is that it forces the board when you're if you don't have a job description and you're creating one, it mm -hmm. forces the board to think about all of that stuff. Yes. Because a lot of times what happens is a board can be its own entity and when you go out to recruit some other people you have all of these implicit understandings of how you function, whether you're expected mm -hmm. to come to all of the events, whether you're expected to serve on a committee. And when you create a board job description together, it forces you to articulate really clearly what are those things so that new people coming on yes. know that they're performing well as expected and desired or right. not. When a board uh, is asked to create an evaluation, again, it asks you, the board to decide what's important yeah. to us. Because in order to create the evaluation, you have to go through that process of deciding what do we want to evaluate on. Right. The other thing that I found really helpful in terms of evaluation is just a quick check-in after mm -hmm. every board meeting. Mm -hmm. um, that helps redirect maybe a board president who's not doing a great job facilitating or um, it helps uh, redirect when you have a group of very vocal board members mm -hmm. and more quiet ones. Just a quick three-minute eval after every board meeting helps fine-tune something before it becomes a really large problem. Right. right. And making sure that there's a great relationship between the executive director and the board. That's so important. Right? Because mm -hmm. the idea that the board is really the um, creating and developing and the staff in terms of the executive director or whoever the lead staff person is, mm -hmm. is executing and implementing and making sure there's a good relationship between those two is is really a mark of a healthy organization yeah. and that idea that there has to be healthy communication and the other thing we've talked about is the idea of creating this culture that allows for discussion yeah and maybe disagreement and that's not a bad thing but the idea of encouraging our boards to have conversations that are difficult and making sure that they, because that's really getting at the meat of potentially what could bring growth to the organization. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that because I think for a lot of um, boards, frequently they serve in small communities. Mm -hmm. And so you know the people that you see around the board table. And I think one of the things we can do that's helpful 
um, to board members is to start to foster a culture in which it's okay to raise tough questions and it's okay to disagree with each other. Yeah. What happens if you don't have that, right, is then you have people starting to go around yep. the power structure of the board. Right. Um, and then you end up with some really unhealthy dynamics. I think the other important thing, speaking of widening the bench, is also knowing how to um, put some limits to the bench. So yes. one thing that we've talked about that's so important are our term limits for board mm -hmm. members. Um, I think so often, uh, especially when organizations are just starting out, they want any board members they can get and they want to keep them as long as possible. And they're afraid if they let them go, right. they won't be able to get anybody else. Right. But I think term limits, saying that you can only serve for X amount of years and then you have to step off, is a great healthy structure for boards. I agree. And it brings new energy. There's, you can count on the fact that there's always going to be a new energy for bringing new ideas and new thoughts to your board, which mm -hmm. I think is something that all of our organizations want. Yep. And so keeping board limit board members um, around long enough to have a really good relationship with the organization, yeah. but not too long where they maybe might start to hinder things just mm -hmm. because they might care too much. Mm -hmm. But the idea of creating energy. And so one of the things I think is really important is having a board matrix. And so looking at what your current structure of your board is mm -hmm. and potentially decide, deciding where you want to go. So the idea of really taking stock right now, you know, what is the composition of your board? Male, female, skill sets, industries, maybe where in, in the community these yeah, people are represented. Absolutely. And then from there, identifying, okay, where's our growth opportunity or where do we need to actually grow our board? Mm -hmm. And so actually laying it out in an Excel document yep. that, I use. Right, that, that lays out sort of what does the current board look like in terms of what does its composition look like, mm -hmm. and then looking to see where you're strong, looking to see where you're weak, and that can help guide your growth and your, your future. It circles back around to that recruitment. Yeah, right. It does. So if you're looking, if you've laid everybody out and you see you have a huge cluster around one certain area and all women, and you know all lawyers let's say that really is informative to your recruitment process you have a huge gap over here right. and then you can especially focus on recruiting those kinds of people yeah. so then it, it just keeps informing and improving your board Definitely. i think one of the things i think is so important when we're talking about this is just to let people know that it's okay to pick one thing yeah. and work on it. Right. I think so often, and I've been in this position as a staff member, um, you just hear all of this information and it becomes too overwhelming. Right. So I would encourage you, if you're feeling that way, pick one thing and work on it and implement it. And right. then once that's in place, you can pick on the next thing. But trying to tackle everything at once is too, too much. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think also the culture of learning, right? The idea of learning about the organization. And then we serve on board boards because we want to learn ourselves. And right. so what is it that we want to learn about finance or fundraising or the mission that mm -hmm. can enhance our own service? And so creating that culture of learning, I think is really important. Yeah. I think board development is also hard work. Yeah. And so building a healthy culture, building a culture of learning, building a strong board recruitment process is hard. And so the idea of creating a celebration culture yeah. along with that, we keep talking about the word culture, but mm -hmm. celebrate the small wins mm -hmm. along the way. Absolutely. Okay, Amara and Rebecca gave us a lot of information. So Nancy, what are the next steps? Well, there's some key tools that you might consider having in place. Job descriptions, the board matrix that we talked about, self-assessment, rotation policies, and orientation schedule. Some things you might consider. Create a calendar that maps out recruitment, orientation, learning, and mentor activities. Establish a board development committee. Tie board recruitment to your planning. Determine what kind of people you need to succeed in your next three years. So what we learned from this segment is that people matter. And getting the right people with the right tools makes all the difference in the world.